The thesis of this video is that you can utilize the Shepard illusion to play bass lines in the left hand that sound like they're traveling over more than one octave. And it is really an illusion, but it is an effective illusion. I'll tell you a little bit about it. Hello, this volume four in the Accordion Nerd series is here to talk to you about the idea of the Shepard scale, uh, which is a kind of auditory illusion that happens uh, when you hear pitches in parallel octaves moving uh, up a scale. This is thought of as the auditory equivalent of a barber's pole, which has uh, red and white stripes painted in a spiral, and as it spins, it kind of looks like continuous uh, flow going through, uh, even though it's just, you know, what you're dealing with is a finite amount of wood. Uh, and uh, so, so basically, the best way to illustrate this is, okay, with my master switch on, I'm going to play a uh, scale, okay? Um, so, let's hear C major. <laughs> So this is thought to be one of the limitations of the Stradella bass accordion, right, is that in whatever octave setting you have, if you have a lot of octave settings on your left hand, or even if you only have one or two, um, that you basically have kind of the limitation of a single octave, right? Um, so on my master setting, I have, I think, five reed blocks on this accordion, and uh, what, what sounds when I'm playing on that setting is basically four octaves of C, including some doubled pitches, okay? Uh, and uh, so what that, what that kind of means is that I'm getting a lot of overtones, right? And so at the overtones are giving the illusion of higher pitches that are not there, right? And so I feel that as far as the left hand goes, it gives you an illusion of moving beyond an octave line, um, especially when you're doing a scale with hands together, so. <laughs> So one of the things that happens, right, is that uh, the note that I'm playing in the right hand, or the notes that I'm playing, because I'm using a, a, a master setting, um, is, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're being echoed by what, what is happening in the left hand, right? So even though the other pitches of C are sounding, uh, while I'm playing this, uh, I'm also hearing this pitch, this is uh, C3, uh, in this note, right, along with C2 and uh, and some others above it, right? Um, so then, same thing with D. And all the way up. And so by the time I reach middle C here, right, I'm still hearing it in this same note down here. And so if I, you know, if the passage is moving particularly quickly, or if there's also chords happening, it kind of gives your ear the illusion of moving upwards, even though you're still hearing, you're still sort of playing within this same octave. So it's kind of forcing your ear to focus on different octaves uh, and follow the melody that way, right? Another way this kind of comes into play is uh, is using walk-ups uh, or alternate basses in your in your left hand playing, right? So. <laughs> It doesn't really fully sound like like that order of pitches, but it does have the you know it, uh, a really really peculiar sense of movement that drives your playing a lot, and especially compared to just one five kind of thing, right? Uh, so it shows up a lot, especially when you're doing walk-ups between chords. Uh, you know, especially with songs that have a lot of one four five movement. That can be a, uh, a really nice way to kind of spice up your, your left hand playing. Um, and, you know, all it takes is just a, you know, get a little bit of an understanding of some of these, you know, the, the beginnings of scale movement in the left hand, right? So if I'm just doing... Why not? Again, even though that, so even though if you're really focusing on it, you can hear the pitch drop to get that lower C sharp in, right? And so then that's a jump down from uh, your ear is really because of the movement kind of 
hearing it move up to the D, right? And then the bass kind of joining it, right? playing in a band with other instruments, the combination of sounds, uh, you know, can kind of add to the illusion, right? This is not the sort of thing that's going to fool anyone into thinking that, you know, by just doing this on its own, that I'm playing actually a two octave scale, right? On its own, it sounds like the note is repeating, like I'm getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, jumping down again. Especially if you play it kind of disconnected, but, you know, with something else, especially going across where the break would be, right, so this is uh, an accordion where the lowest note is this C2 here. Uh, so more isolated, you can hear it here, right? And so that is the lowest note that's sounding in this master setting, right? So then the highest note in this same setting is going to be this B2 here, right? Which is also doubled on top by, you know, by the other octaves. So if I'm playing, uh, you know, something going across here, right? Okay, so... So because this melody is being doubled in the right hand, it doesn't necessarily sound like I'm jumping up a major seventh, like uh, if I were following the lowest note, right? If my ear was following the lowest note, that would be what it sounded like. But because it's going in the right hand, it sounds like it's going down a minor second. And that's because now, because of this, my ear is focusing on a similar movement down here. So what I'm hearing is this, which is very clear, even though it's happening from two different reed sets here, right? So this is kind of an illusion that you can exploit uh, when you're playing bass lines, when you're playing uh, unisons, uh, when there's stuff with a lot of, you know, a lot of other chords happening, uh, and it, it's possible to exploit it as a solo player, for sure. So one other thing that it definitely will not do is give the illusion of the same pitch happening in two different octaves consecutively. So it kind of needs an intermediary pitch for the illusion to kind of really take place, or to have something else going on, right? So here's a bass line from an Ethiopian song by uh, the accordionist and keyboardist Hailu Mergia, um, and the song is uh, Shemonan shemo shemo Noye. I have really should have practiced that. Okay. And so the, the bass line, which you can hear a bass player doing, or his keyboard in, in, in a, a recording of it, is... If I'm just playing that on the, the left hand, that's not going to give... it's not going to give the illusion. Really, the only way that I can sort of get more of the, the illusion of what's happening is if someone else plays it with a certain articulation, you know, and I'm trying to copy that articulation in my left hand, right? So what happens here? Long, short, short, long, long, short, short, long, long, short, short, long, long, short. Okay, so that articulation is really important. So then, if someone hears that, right, and then I do this in my left hand. Same articulation, it's not fooling anyone about the octave, but at least, you know, people are going to recognize what, what it's kind of trying to do, right? And that's some, something as an arranger that you can kind of take, a, take advantage of. Okay. So one way where this really demonstrates its effectiveness is in something simple like playing the blues, right? You know, this is kind of a common kind of walking bass pattern for a, for a blues progression, right? So I'll just do one and four here. Now, because the lowest note is C, you'd think that this pattern would really only work in C, but it still works somehow when you transpose it into other keys, so if I need to take it to F. In the left hand, it still has the same kind of effectiveness, and it's because the style is kind of telling my ear what notes to listen to, what octave of notes to listen to, really. So, so if I play this pattern in the left hand... Go to F. Okay, 
Okay, so the lowest note that's sounding is this, once again, this C2 all the way down here. Um, the fact that it's being doubled in all these octaves is kind of lending the illusion that it's kind of crossing the, the octave line. Okay, so, and especially if I'm playing it with some chords or something. <laughs> example of a left hand melody that pretty freely crosses the octave line as defined by this accordion. So again, the lowest note that sounds here is this C2. But then with all of these octaves sounding at the same time, uh, it, you know, it makes it so that going from C to B doesn't necessarily sound like a major seventh all the time, right? Um, and so because of the steps that come before it and come after it, the context really kind of grounds it and makes your ear hear it as a stepwise melody. So this is a famous cue from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> bass lines, right? You can kind of think that they'll be lost, but really they do kind of shine through, especially when you're playing a lot. And if you're kind of hearing them, then, uh, you know, that kind of brings it out a little bit more. You know, there's kind of a little accent that happens when I'm, you know, when I'm listening to a, a, a bass line that I'm playing in the left hand and I'm hearing the intervals the way they should be going rather than just confined to an octave, um, that kind of imagination comes across a little bit. So give it a shot. Uh, so learning bass lines is, you know, is, is a pretty rewarding thing to do. That's the thesis of this video.